The Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise God, it's time for another Word of Faith Netcast, and this is a very, very special netcast. Tell you what, I am excited about this because and I'll just try to get this as, out as quickly as possible because I want to get right into it. We have as a special guest, you might say, uh, Pastor Keith Moore from Faith Life Church down in Branson, Missouri. And uh, he's not really going to be a guest on the netcast. I'm going to actually play his video uh, program right here on the netcast. We're going to break it up over the next several netcasts. But the reason I'm doing this is this message is so vitally important to the body of Christ. I can't improve on it. I just want to play it the way he taught it and the way I heard it on his television program. Now here's the, here's the thing about this. This fits right into the vision that the Lord gave me. I've shared it with you many times before in August of 1980 when he said, Proclaim the word of faith, be a showcase of ministries, and train people to fulfill the word of God. Now, this falls in the category of showcasing ministries. So we're going to go right into this message by Keith Moore. Check it out. It is an important message, so pay attention to what he's saying. Thanks, guys. Y'all can be seated. If you would turn to John this morning, Gospel account of John, chapter 14. Let's continue on in our series on seeing Jesus. Seeing Jesus. For some weeks we've been talking about this now. And our text here is verse 21. John 14, 21. Jesus said, He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. He that loves me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Whether people know it or not, the whole world is hungry for the manifestations of God. What does that mean? The reality of God. In the Amplified, he says it like that. He said, uh, whoever really loves me, the one that keeps my commands, my words. I'll love him and will show, reveal, manifest myself to him. I will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him. I believe it's Isaiah 45, 15 or so. It says, God is a God who hides himself. I know that sounds strange to us. Well, I thought God's a God who reveals himself. Yeah, there it is. But actually, he does both. He hides himself from some. And he reveals himself to others. Now, if that sounds strange to you, get unstrange. Because <laughs> that's what the Word says. Right? And you want to submit your thinking to the Word. Why? Well, it wouldn't be too hard to figure that if God is real and He is the Almighty and He is the creator of heavens and earth and He knows the end from the beginning, that He could very easily shake this planet. How many know He could put His face in the sky? He could put His face in the sky from Los Angeles to New York and say, hey, I'm God. <laughs> he could shake this planet where in two minutes there wouldn't be anybody on the globe that didn't believe in God. Couldn't he? 
I mean, if he's God, if he's real, couldn't he do that? Yes. Why doesn't he? Why doesn't he? Why has he left it in such a way that you can be born and live and die on this planet and never believe in God? That's exactly the way he set it up. This is qualifying time. This life. Those that choose to believe in him without having seen qualify to be his. Oh, to be his family. Scripture said he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Do you believe on him? Oh, people can scoff and they can mock and they make fun of people like us. They say, oh, religion is a crutch for the weak-minded and ignorant. Well, we'll soon see who's weak-minded and ignorant, <laughs> won't we? Yeah, soon they, they won't be so big-mouthed. <laughs> when the sky splits, when he returns... And every knee bows, every tongue confesses. So let them rail, let them say their stuff and make fun of us if they will. But it's true. He is real. I said he is real. And right here and now in this life, people who really love him and believe in him are going to do what he says. They're going to keep his words. And to those, Jesus said, I will manifest myself to them. Not to everybody on the planet. But to the, in fact, the very next verse, uh, Judas, not Judas Iscariot, a different Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, he said, how are you going to manifest yourself to us and not to the world? How are you going to show yourself to us and yet the world's not going to see you? And basically the next verse, he repeats what he just said. If a man loves me, He'll keep my words. Do you love him? Yes. Are you interested in keeping his words? Yes. And as surely as you do, tell me what is he going to do? Yes. That's the part I'm excited about. I, I just know the Lord is faithful. I just am sure that you and I keep pursuing this path that we're on. The Lord, is be, he's already begun to manifest himself to us in an unprecedented measure in our lives. I believe it. When the Lord says, you know, we're about to be in the best shape of our lives, finances is a part of that, but it's not the big part. The big part is Jesus being more real to us than he's ever been. Oh, come on. Us seeing him clearer and knowing him better and him being more real to us than we even knew he could be. Now, here, in this life, I'm excited about that. Is there anything better? I don't know of anything better. <laughs> we begin going through John, this, this book of John, looking at the words of Jesus, asking ourselves the question, are, do, we, do we know who said this? Do we understand this? Are we doing this? Because we know if we'll do it, he's going to manifest himself to us. So we've made it through John 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and 9. Man, we're moving right along, aren't we? <laughs> Look at 9 again today. Now, if you're the first time with us today on this series and you think, well, man, that sounds like y'all have covered a lot already. We have. But it's available to you at no charge. You can go on the internet. You can download it in its entirety for free. If you're in the building, you can go back here in the Word Supply and get a, a, a CD or a DVD. No charge. No charge. And like the Lord said to us a while back, no charge means no excuse for not getting it, right? Not having it. 
John 9, we see the healing of the blind man. And these mighty, miraculous healings have shaken up the whole region, particularly the religious leaders have become increasingly upset. And that's, that's too mild a word. They are incensed. They're full of anger and wrath to the point of wanting to kill him over these people getting healed. Now that's men's religion. And it's still that way today. Traditional religion, traditional religious people are the meanest people on the planet. I mean, they'll kick you and give you three scriptures why it's all right. And they'd rather you perish with your poverty or your disease than for you to contradict their doctrine or their creed or their group. See, for these people, for these leaders to go along with Jesus, they'd have to admit that they've taught some wrong stuff, right? They've believed some wrong things, and they're unwilling to do that, and that's the problem. How many know we should always be willing to change when we see what's right? If it shows us up wrong, well, time to change. Not time to fuss, not time to argue. Not time to get mad. Not time to get your feelings hurt. Not time to quit church. Not time to stay home. Time to? Another word for change is repent. Time to repent. Repent means to, don't just mean to feel sorry for it, it means to turn. From that, go the other direction. Change. Oh, you would that everybody would have a heart to do that because there's so many people have become offended. You know, there are people who ought to be in this building right now. They're not here. They're afraid they might see somebody that they had a falling out with. And they know they're wrong. They know they're wrong. But they just don't want to deal with it and they're unwilling to admit it. And even if they are wrong, they're wrong too. And if they hadn't have done that, then maybe I wouldn't have acted like I did. So it's really their fault that I acted like a heathen. <laughs> they, they made me so mad. No, oh, honey, it ain't their fault that you acted like a heathen. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. People are so prideful and they get their little feelings hurt. And they don't come to church and they don't fellowship with people that they should and they pull back and they hide and they, they do this and that. When they should repent, they should change. Change. Now, Jesus teaching and ministering to these folks, some of them repented, some of them didn't. In John 9, when the man got healed by washing at the pool of Siloam and he was blind and now he could see, and the religious leaders called him, you know, and examined him. We talked about that last week. And they actually kicked him out of the synagogue, kicked him out. All the man did was get healed. <laughs> but like we said before, why would you want to stay a part of a thing like that? But uh, verse 39 9, 39, Jesus said, For judgment I'm come into this world, that they which see not might see. That just happened. This man couldn't see physically. Now he can. How many know it also applies to seeing spiritually? People that can't see. You know, we sing the old song, Amazing Grace, don't we? I was blind, but now I see. Oh, glory to God. And though 
Did you know he's also come that they which see might be made blind? We haven't emphasized that part very much, have we? It's just as true as the first phrase. And some of the Pharisees which were with him, they heard these words and they said to him. And of course you can tell this is sarcasm, attitude. Are we blind also? They heard him say that. What, are, are you saying we're blind? <laughs> Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, we see. So your sin remains. You're in sin right now. Why? See, they wanted to smart off about are we blind too? And basically, if you allow me to paraphrase what Jesus said a little bit, he said, no, that's the problem. You're not blind. Are y'all with me? You understand what I'm saying? Are we blind too? He said, well, if you were blind, if you really didn't see it, you wouldn't be in sin. Do you know the Lord does not hold us accountable for what we don't see? We are held accountable for the light we have. Are y'all believe in God with me this morning? This is a really important subject, but it's also deep and it's, it's wide. As big as light. <laughs> How big is light? Oh. This whole planet is working because of light. God is light. Jesus, the Word, became flesh. He is the light. And that light is the life. Without light, there is no life. And we know that naturally speaking. Without light, there'd be no plant life, and there'd be no animal life, and there'd be no you life. Without light, there'd be no warmth, There'd be no photosynthesis. There'd be no life. That's a reflection of the spiritual reality. God said, light be. And light was manifested. Oh, hallelujah. And everything you and I see or touch or have a part of is the result of that. Well... There came a manifestation spiritually. The Word became flesh. Oh, hallelujah. And He is the light. And that light has come into the world that everybody can see if they will. Amen. Now, go with me to the uh, 15th chapter. Actually, stop by chapter 12 on the way over. It's right on the way. Chapter 12, verse 36. Jesus said to them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Where is the light now? You know, he was the light as he walked among them, and then he left here. And he's gone to be with the Father. Where's the light now? He said, you are the light. Didn't he? Is he in us? And so he is the light and he's in us. So we are the light in this world right now. What does that mean? When people saw him, they saw light. Because they saw God. Didn't he say, if you've seen me, You've seen the Father. You cannot see without light. And I, I don't even know how to explain this to you. I, I don't understand it well enough myself. But light, when you're seeing, light is in you. 
we, we're accustomed just to the natural part that light, we, we're seeing reflections and lights coming in because of light, our eyes, our lenses work. But even those who understand the eyes and the nervous system and the brain tell us, you don't really see with your eyes. Your eyes are like a camera lens. Actually, the camera lens made like an eye a little bit. And the light reflects off of it and then is turned into electrochemical signal that goes along your wiring to places in your brain and your brain decides what you saw. So the light is actually inside you. Oh, can y'all hear this or not? The light's not just reflecting off your eyeballs or getting inside your lens. The, the light gets in you. And any time you see, it's because light got in you. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. Hold your place here. Go to Luke 11. Let's, can you wait off into this just a little bit more here? Man, this is shouting ground. I'm telling you, we're getting into the the foundations of the universe, of all creation. Luke 11 and 34, Jesus said, The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is single, your whole body also is what? Light. Your body is full of light. <laughs> that means light is in you. Not just shining off your eyeballs. It's in you. Somebody say light is in me. But when your eye is evil... Your body also is full of darkness. How many know somebody, the, the lights can be on bright, your eyes can be wide open, and you can be full of darkness? Right? Because even with your physical eyes wide open, you can choose to shut your physical eyes. Isn't that what we read about in Matthew 13 and other places? It said, their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes. Hear with their ears. Be converted and I should heal them. So he said, take heed that the light that is in you be not darkness. If your whole body therefore be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light as when the bright shining of a candle, we might say like a light bulb today, does give you light. Now with that in mind, go back to John 12. Who is the light? Jesus is the light. He is the light. John 12, 35, Jesus said to them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walks in darkness knows not where he goes. Have you ever met anybody that didn't know where they were going? I'm not talking about just on the road. I'm talking about in life. They don't know where they're going. They don't know who they are. They don't know what they are. They don't know where they're supposed to be. They don't know what they're supposed to be doing. They don't know who they're supposed to be hooked up with. That's a person who's full of darkness. They're stumbling around. They go here and try that and it flops. They go over here and try that and it flops. They go over here and why? Because they're stumbling around in the dark. When you have light, you don't deal with these other 400 choices because you know that's not for you. You go right here because you saw that's it. Oh, come on. Can you see this? 
You don't stumble all over everything. You make a beeline. You go straight to it. You do it. The Bible said you have an unction of the Holy One. And you know all things. We have a knowing inside us. We can know where we're supposed to be. We can know what we're supposed to be well, doing. Praise the Lord. That's the first part of this special message. And I encourage you, I encourage you to stay tuned next week and the week after as we get into this special message by Pastor Keith Moore. Like I said, I cannot improve on it. I would encourage you to stay tuned and watch the entirety of this message here on the netcast. In the meantime, you can write me here at Word of Faith Ministries. That's Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina, the zip code 27262. And, of course, as always, you can write me at my email address. My email is drbill at wfm.org. Got it here on the screen. Write me there at that email address. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear how the program is ministering to you. And particularly what we're doing here with showcasing ministries with uh, Pastor Keith Moore. Let me know how that uh, works for you, so to speak. And I tell you what, I am just excited about some things that are happening. Uh, by the way, quick news, Word of Faith Radio, WFR.org. Here's the, the address for the Internet address. Wow, I'm so excited. We've got Scott Webb starting on there, and we've got David Ingalls starting. Wow, this is exciting to have these renowned ministers on Word of Faith Radio. I'm looking forward to their programs. 8.15 in the morning for David Ingalls and 8.30 for Scott Webb every morning, Monday through Friday. I'm just excited about it, so stay tuned for that. Join us again next time for the continuation uh, of this message that we're ministering to you from uh, Keith Moore. And remember until then to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.